Welcome back to the Tesla Solar Roof Frequently Asked Questions series by American Home Contractors. If you haven't done so already, I strongly recommend watching our previous episodes to get a full understanding of what goes into the planning phases of installing a Tesla Solar Roof. Today's video is part two of our installation discussion. You can find the link to part one below. Enjoy! With any construction project, you run the risk of running into hiccups, some things you can't predict. You know, weather is one of those big things. Are there any other things in the installation process of Tesla solar roof that we have experienced through over 40 installations at this point that may be choke points in, you know, preventing that two day, one day, two day install. So a lot of the variables when installing Tesla solar roof that could cause a delay are variables that we have control over, right? Mm -hmm. By the time we get on site, we have control over the materials being there. We have control over making sure that we do a proper inventory and we know what's on site. We know the site conditions. We have a good grip on the scope of the project and a game plan, where the strings are gonna go, where the electrical equipment's gonna go. We have everything mapped out before we start tearing off the roof. So all of those variables are in our control. The variables that we can control when we get on site are, you know, the biggest one is weather, you know? So if it starts to rain or it's too cold or whatever, and it, that could cause a delay. Yes, mm -hmm. so then it could push the project out a little bit. But assuming that we've done our job up to that point, which we have a great track record of doing, then there's not that many variables that will knock us off course from making sure that we complete the roof install in the time frame that we've allowed for. A lot of this ties back to unforeseen things like wood could obviously cause a delay as well. So if we get on the roof and we tear off the roof and we made assumptions that, hey, there might be a sheet or two of plywood needed to be replaced and it ends up being 10 or 15 or 20, right? That might not necessarily cause a huge delay because we have the manpower out on site to deal with that, but it's going to take a, you know another hour or two. So again, if that pushes into another day, then you know unfortunately that may happen. But the surprises tend to be, you know, minimal on the roofing side on average, right? Certain projects, you know, you can have more surprises than others. Right. But typically, if you do as much of the upfront work as possible, which we do, we try to identify anything that could steer us off course. With the electrical, a lot of times, again, there's not many surprises because we've already done a site survey. We already know where the equipment's going to go, where the conduits are going to be run. You know, the materials are there. We have an idea of what to do and weather is less important with the electrical because it's all inside. Mm -hmm. So it could be raining outside when we're doing this type of work. So yeah, the, the, the delays and stuff th that we can control are, are minimal. A lot of the delays that we experience with Tesla solar roof and solar in general comes from third parties and stuff that we have less control over, like the authority having jurisdictions, the AHJs, the permit offices, the utility companies, right, right, the designers, stuff like that, where it's like, hey, this is not our company doing this. We're, we don't have control over how fast we can approve this permit set. We don't have control over how fast we can you know, get these inspections scheduled other than us making a call to the permit office and saying, hey, we're done. We need an inspection scheduled, mm -hmm. right? We're on top of that. Um, meter swaps from the utility company, that can cause a delay. It just, it just depends on how backed up they are. And unfortunately, the biggest backup recently has been the permit offices and the utility companies, you know, just waiting on them to get the paperwork approved, waiting on them to get the inspection scheduled, to come out on site, look over everything. And then, of course, swapping that meter out for a smart meter or a solar meter, you know, from the utility company. Unfortunately, that can take a little bit of time. And there's nothing we can really do other than just, you know, squeak the wheel so that we get the oil. So if this is to happen, if, you know, I'm not getting permission from the AHJs, the authority having jurisdictions in the time that I would like, should I be the one that's calling them? Can I call them? Or is that bad practice? Should I run through my certified installer to deal with all of those with all of those processes? So it's best for the Tesla certified installer to handle those processes Dang. because when the homeowner makes contact with the utility company, the permit office, again, it's just another party that's involved and, you know, we appreciate any help and assistance, but we need to work together. We need to be on the same team. So, you know, if we feel in certain situations where it would be beneficial for the homeowner to help out, especially if it's like an insurance claim or something and we're mm -hmm. dealing with another third party, the insurance carrier the homeowner is actually the customer of the insurance company. So a lot of times if we can't get 
what we're trying to get done soon as possible through the insurance company, we'll ask the homeowner politely, hey, can you help us out? Like you're the customer in this situation, right? They're the customer of the utility company as well. So yes, could we work together and help facilitate things to move a little quicker? We could, but it's still going to be a delay. It's not like, you know, it's like anything. If you squeak the wheel, it gets oiled. If you call, if you express concern, like, hey, I'd like this moved along, moved along, moved along, things tend to move along a little bit faster than if you don't squeak the wheel, Mm -hmm. right? So in certain situations, we can get the homeowner involved and we can work things to to get it done sooner than later. But, you know, is, is, is it an emergency? Like, what's the reason that we need to go through these hoops and you know, stress ourselves out unnecessarily, you know, just know that it's going to take some time working with the permit offices, working with the utility companies. It's just unfortunate, but it is what it is. You know, once we complete the roof, once we get our electrical installed, that process is pretty quick. We have a lot of control over that. But then after that, with the permits and the utility companies, again, that stuff is more outside of our control. We can influence, but we don't have the control to actually make it happen because it's those third parties that need to be involved and they need to do things on their end so that we can turn the system on, get the meter swapped out, turn the system on and start producing. So I know we've been talking a lot about weather being weather dependent in certain aspects of the roof install, uh, primarily rain. Uh, but is there a temperature aspect as well? It, can it, is it possible for it to be too cold or too hot for us to install this roof? Temperature can play a role in installing any roofing material. Mm-hmm. If it's extremely cold, it's not great to be out doing roof replacement projects. So yes, if it's below, I'd say 40 degrees Fahrenheit, then you want to take extra precaution. Things can freeze. Um, it's not going to really have an impact on the stuff that we're doing on the roof. Mm-hmm. But we tend to be outside installing above 40 degrees Fahrenheit. If it's extremely hot, again, we can install it. There's nothing that's saying that we can't. But if it's 100 degrees and you know 90% humidity, it's just unpleasant to work outside. So the guys need to take extra precautions, drink extra water. Mm-hmm. And that could cause a little bit of a delay as well because we might not be able to step foot on that roof after 3 p.m right? The roof tiles may be extremely hot and maybe just, you know, really difficult work conditions. So, you know, typically in our market, it's, it's nice because it does stay in between the extremes, you know, very rarely are are we extreme cold or extreme heat. It happens. And unfortunately, yes, it can cause a little bit of a delay. We try to, to avoid it. We try to work as much as possible, work smart, you know, in the summer months, we tend to work sooner as soon as we can. If the homeowner allows us to get on site 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning, we tend to start earlier than in the winter when it needs to warm up a little bit, then we'll tend to start 8 o'clock or even 9 o'clock if we need things to heat up and, and melt. So we kind of glossed over it in episode one of the FAQs of the process. You know, you, you install the roof, you link all of those solar tiles together in their arrays, you run those electrical cables through the attic, through conduit, down through the house, through the inverter, and then back into the house to, to power it from the roof, right? In that process, you're installing, or you may be installing, should be installing some power wall battery backup systems as well to store that energy that you're producing and, and generating on the roof. When is it too late? Like, when do I need to decide how many power walls I want to have installed? We always prefer that people make the decision on whether or not they're going to install power wall batteries up front early as possible because mm-hmm. then we can plan for it we you know we need to design for it we need to submit drawings to the permit office showing that there's battery storage we need to include it in the interconnection application so as early as possible yes please make the decision whether or not you're gonna you know choose to have tesla power walls added to your tesla solar roof system but you can add power walls down the road. And if you make an adjustment to the project midway or partway, you might be able to add a power wall or two or more um, during the course of the installation project if we haven't already installed those parts. Just know that that could cause some significant delays if Mm -hmm. the homeowner was indecisive or wanted to add battery backup when there wasn't any battery backup originally anticipated, right? It's a lot easier to add, you know, a third battery from two Mm -hmm. than it is to add 
one battery from zero. Yeah, right. Right. So just know that, you know, it's ideally nice to know early on how many batteries you want and need. And that's why it's so important to, you know, plan properly for these types of projects. You want to know, based on your system size and consumption, how many batteries you're going to require. And, you know, the thought goes, you know, how much do you want to back up? Typically, you need two to three batteries to back up a full home, right? A full panel. So, you know, if you're only looking to get one Powerwall battery, that's going to be, you know, a partial backup. You're going to need to typically take breakers out of your main electric panel. You're going to have to put them into a sub panel. And then that sub panel will be backed up from that one battery. And it's 30 amps or less. So you mm. can't back up anything that's 50 or you know, 40, 50, 60 amps. Right. You know, some of those heavier loads, you won't be able to back up with just one battery. You'll need at least two. And then based on system size, you know, it's probably good to, you know, have two or three per electric panel per 200 amps of service. So it's really important to understand that early on, make the decision early on. But you can down the road, if it's a situation, I'm proof of this, you know, if you want to add additional power walls down the road, you can add power walls to your existing system. So again, if you're, if you're indecisive on that or you're unsure, just know that you can always do that. So I have a couple ideas of where I would want to have power walls installed in my home. Uh, will your team tell me where exactly I can install them? Wh just what are the rules around installing power walls? So home energy storage, Tesla power walls can't be installed anywhere in the house, right? You got to avoid the living spaces and it depends on the individual authority having jurisdictions code of where you can install these power walls as well. Some permit offices want the power walls in a fireproof room. Some jurisdictions don't mind if it's just in a non-livable space, but it's not fireproofed with 5 8 inch drywall mm -hmm. or some sort of fireproofing around the batteries. Um, so it really depends. It's really um, specific to the location, um, you know, the individual permit office, the individual county, that type of stuff. But general rule of practice, rule of thumb is you don't want the power walls in a living space, right? You can't put in your living room or family room next to your big screen television. Um, you know, garages, basements next to the electrical equipment, that's typically where we install power wall batteries. Yeah, and you can install them outdoors as well, right? You can install Tesla power wall batteries outdoors. In warm weather climates, that's a lot better than it is in cold weather climates because mm. the cold has an impact on the battery, right? When it's cold outside, it's just like a vehicle battery. When right. it's cold outside, the battery is not going to be as good as if it's 70 degrees. So ideally, you know, in Maryland and certain areas where it does get cold in the winter months, we want to put the batteries inside, in the basement, in the garage, wherever it makes the most sense. We obviously have to think about how much conduit we're running, from those batteries to the electric panel. So if those batteries, the homeowner wants the battery to be inside the garage, we have to think how far is that garage from the main panel? How much conduit needs to be run? And is there gonna to need to be any drywall work as well? And that's something that can cause a delay during the course of the project as well. If the homeowner says, look, we originally spoke about having my two power wall batteries in the basement next to my electric panels, which is the easiest because mm -hmm. they're right there. I really want them in my garage. Okay, well, there are some limitations for that, right? You can't put the power wall batteries behind where the car is going to park because if the car were to accidentally smash into the battery, right. you need to have a concrete pillar separating. So if the car were to back up too much, it would smash into the concrete pillar and not damage the battery. So there are restrictions when we install them in the garages with space and other requirements. And every, you know, again, every county, every jurisdiction is different on the space requirements in front of the batteries, right? Access to the batteries, access to the electric panels, that kind of stuff. So, you know, those are the biggest hiccups that we have on the homeowner side when we're in the course of the project is, hey, I, I thought about the batteries being here. We discussed that initially, but what would it take to have the batteries over there? Well, it could take another day or two of time for the electricians. It could take a lot of, you know, conduit runs, mm -hmm. right? Getting the wires from the battery to the main panel. And depending on the layout of the house, it could require drywall work, paint, 
You know, it could require a lot more trades to get involved than a simple, hey, you know, I just want it from here to here and, you know, it's no big deal. It could be a very big deal. Are they noisy? Are they going to make any noise at all? The Tesla Powerwall batteries will have a little hum as well. So it's important to, you know, keep that in mind. If you want to put them in a space that you're allowed to and it's close by to an area that's really quiet, you may hear a little hum from the batteries. You know, it's electricity, so you'll hear that a little mm. Gotcha. But it's not it's not terribly loud, but yeah, you just have to keep that in mind. Yeah, and do they generate any heat? Are they going to get warm at all? Uh, the batteries I have don't seem to get warm, no. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so I know we were talking about the installation process, how sometimes in certain cases, the roof can be installed while the electricians are working on the wiring as well. If that's not the case and we need to do electrical on a separate day once the roof is complete or the power walls are a little backordered and we have to wait a day or two to get that process started, can I start using my roof power before my power walls are installed? So no, you cannot use your Tesla solar roof before the electrical portion is complete. The utility company issues PTO when the project is completed, all the inspections are passed, and the meter is swapped out. And then that process to get you know from the meter swap to PTO is usually pretty quick. It's just a matter of getting the meter swap from the utility company. That could be a delay depending on how backed up the utility company is. And again, it's stuff that's outside of our control, unfortunately, but we try to, you know, call on it. We try to facilitate the movement of that as much as possible so that our homeowners, once they get their beautiful Tesla solar roof installed and their batteries, their inverters, their gateways, all the electrical equipment, once everything is installed and inspected and approved, we try to make sure that they get turned on as quickly as possible because we know how excited they are to get everything turned on, start to produce that power and start to look at it through the app. They get to check the production, the consumption, the charging, discharging. They get to play with the app settings. It's a really exciting time after everything's completed and the utility company issues permission to operate. And there you have it. That's going to do it for the FAQ series regarding preparation and installation of a solar roof and power wall system. But the series isn't done yet. In the next one, we'll sit down with Dave yet again to go over the Tesla app and how he takes all of the data from the roof and power wall to make sure that he is maximizing his system's potential and how you can do the same. If you're still on the fence about signing up for a solar roof yourself, you can head to AmericanHomeContractors.com slash Tesla. Check out more information, including our 100% free solar roof cost calculator to see an estimated cost of what it would look like to get this product on your home. If you're looking for more solar roof content from American Home Contractors, you can find us across the web at AHCDMV. From all of us here at American Home Contractors, thank you once again for watching. We'll see you in the next one.